Mm. Hello, hello, my beautiful students. How are you today? I hope that you are pretty, pretty fine. <laughs> well, as you can see, the health has, has come one more time to this person, to this body. <laughs> And I believe that we are going to be having a better class than yesterday that I was dying like, okay, guys, this is the review of different tenses. Well, no, thanks God, I feel super better today. So we can be learning different, 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 different things. Remember that as we are in intermediate level, I need to be speaking in English with you most of the time, at least 80 or 90 percent. Why? Because it is important in order that you can be developing your listening skills. Today, we are going to be having some videos that are going to be helping us to practice listening indeed <laughs> but let me say hello in the correct way let me share with you my powerpoint presentation yes promise that during the next uh, week we are going to be changing the memes also the colors and so on i don't know why i don't understand why i can't make this bigger eh, here it is okay oh uh, what's going on with my screen ah <laughs> uh, it's okay let's continue saying hello to each other for today <laughs> and let me open my powerpoint if the owner is not sick the computer is, can you believe it? But well, at least the, 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 pre uh, the presentation is okay. <laughs> so we can be surviving with all this that we have for today in this moment. Okay, okay, sweet boys and sweet girls. Let me show you this that I'm going to be giving you uh, today. Let's just start with a video in order that you can be practicing you're listening. I finally, here is my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> well, let's start again. Well, first of all, I would like to say hello one more time <laughs> to this English class. Hey there, as I was telling you, we are going to be changing um, the memes. Meme in English, this is a meme. We are going to be learning different words. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I would like to say hello. I hope that you are having an excellent day. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Please never forget to practice your English to review. If you have questions, situations, let me know and I'm going to be helping you. As I was, as I'm going to be speaking in English most of the time here with you, I'm going to try to speak slowly in order that you can get what I am saying. If sometimes I get excited and I start talking too fast, please let me know and I'm going to be slowing down, okay? <laughs> Very good. Let's start with this that I have here for you. Let me tell you, welcome to this English class. And let's continue learning something new every day. And thanks, God. I believe that today we are going to be finishing with the review. And also we are going to start with some other new things that are going to be pretty, pretty useful. It is important, as I was telling you, to have this review because I'm not sure if you have been studying English since you were younger, younger, or you just started, or you were studying and you uh, were having like a pause or a, like a recess in your English learning and you are taking back everything. That's why we are having this, uh, this review. Okay, don't worry. In some, we are not going to be having it. 
I guess, I believe, I think, okay? <laughs> Very good. So as we are going to be learning something new today, chan, 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 let's continue with this that I have here for you. I feel super happy that I can speak in a very good way today. Hey. And remember that during this week, you are going to be having your videos before 9 a.m. every day. Okay, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, only for this week that was awesome. Well, no, it was not awesome. It was awful, but thanks God, everybody's right. Okay, yes, my apologies. Let's continue with this. First of all, we are going to be having this video. I don't know where is my picture, uh, doesn't matter. This video, it's going to be super easy for you, but as we are going to start listening in English, we are going to be having this, that is going to be a little bit short, a little bit short, okay? So don't worry, I'm not going to be spending the class uh, with videos and videos because you are going to say, oh, teacher, if I want to see videos or if I want to watch videos, I can do it by my own, in my own house. Yes, you are right, but this is going to be links, okay? We are going to start with this that I have here for you. Uh, it's a, a very low uh, level, but it is going to be helpful in order to help us with our ear. Now that we are starting this level, here we go. I'm going to be quiet in order to show you this. So. <laughs> Yes. Who's this? My brother. He's so handsome. How old is he? He's 34. Oh, he's a doctor. Oh, <laughs> that's his wife. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Penny. Who's this? That's my mother. Your mother? But she's so old. She's not old. She's 58. Okay. Who's this? Is he a doctor too? No, he's an architect. That's my sister's husband. Who's this? That's my sister's son. He's a university student. He's so cute. He's so young. <laughs> Who's this short old woman? What? That is not a short old woman. That's me. Sorry. Oh, sorry. oh my goodness. Now you had your one minute, 50 seconds of listening per day, okay? <laughs> was it easy or difficult? Nah, I know that it was easy, but also you were having the subtitles there. Tell me, what did you get from this video? What did we learn? Did we learn that we need to be very careful with the expressions that we are going to be using when we speak in English? Yes, exactly. We are going to be very careful when we... No, well, you can be speaking in English, but it is not only learning words, learning sentences, learning tenses. Um, it is also how you are going to be making use of your language, not only in English, but in each language that we are going to be having. But well, that is not the point of the class. It was only the practice. So there you are going to be having this video. We are going to be having several video videos because it is pretty important that you can be listening, please, to this. 
but well, my handsome and beautiful and pretty girls, let's continue with this that I have here. Chan, 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 chan. What are we going to be learning today? Eh, eh, not what we are going to be learning, what we are going to be doing in this moment. We are going to be having our speaking part, okay? This is going to be super easy for you. What are we going to do? Let me show you. Um, why it is not working? We are going to be speaking in English for one minute at least, okay? I hope that you are ready, guys, for this that we are going to be having. Speaking time. Ooh, one, two, one, two, three. Just a minute. Excellent. This is a speaking game, okay? And it is going to be based on a very famous game on English radio. The aim or the goal of the game is to speak for one minute on a subject, okay? You can choose the subject that you want. You cannot stop, you cannot make a mistake, or you cannot talk about a different subject. For that reason, it is important that we can be practicing. And for that reason, we are going to be having my cell phone here with you and with me, okay? In order to talk about the, the topic that you choose in just one minute, okay? So are you ready? I hope so. One, two, one, two, three. Here we go. No, stop, stop. <laughs> you are going to be here in this radio set. Does it look like a, a radio set? Yes, right? Okay, let's start. One minute. One, two, my chronometer. One, two, three. Here we go. Let's start speaking in English. Here we go. One minute, one minute. You can do it, you can do it. You can do it. 32, 37 minutes, seconds. Forty-seven, forty-eight. Stop! Oh my goodness! You were speaking in English for all these minutes. Was it easy or difficult? It was easy, right? So, you know what? Yeah, today you were having your one minute, 50 seconds of listening and one minute of speaking in English. What you can be doing if you want to practice more, I wish you could be practicing more. But I'm going to be here like five minutes just recording and I don't know if you are doing the exercise. I hope that you really are trying to do this exercise because the good is for you. Uh, you are going to be the one who is going to be working and developing these skills. Remember, we need to be listening and we need to be speaking because a good listener is going to be a good speaker. That's the reason why we used to have these speaking games or these speaking activities. And what you can be doing every single day is you can start, for example, today, Friday, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, having this exercise, choosing a topic that you want, choosing a subject that you want, and for just one minute, you can talk about that. Or you can make like a game where you are going to be choosing a topic and you can be speaking as much as you can at the end. You check the time that you were having speaking about that topic. And what you can do is to choose another or another second topic and try to break that record with more minutes or with more seconds. 
Okay, let's try to do that as a speaking exercise. Also, if you want, you can record yourself for one minute and you can send me that uh, audio uh, in order that I can be listening to it and I could be sending you a review. Okay, very good. Here we go. Very good. That was our speaking part. That's great. Okay, now I don't really want to show you this exercise because it's going to be super cool for you. Really, it is going to be helping me. Um, yes, <laughs> because we are going to be having also you are going to be having this PowerPoint presentation in order that you can be playing with this. You can be modifying all this that I have here for you. Don't, don't worry, okay? And we are going to be starting with SpongeBob SquarePants memorizing. This is going to be like a game. We are going to be having or playing that memory game. Do you like the memory games? Are you good at, at that? I hope so. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's go with this. We are going to be having these different words. They are going to be super easy. Angie, does it have a very specific purpose for um, the class? Yes, actually, it is not about wasting time while I am recording. But this is going to be like a strategy for you. But I'm not going to be doing like, oh, this is a game. Try to do this and that's it. I lo trata de intentas en tu casa. Bye. Let's continue with. No, it is important that you can be playing with me and doing these exercises because promise it is going to be pretty useful for you in the future. So here you have some simple words that are going to be pretty um, easy for you to remember. I'm going to give you 15 seconds in order that you can remember these words, okay? And we are going to be playing. Then I'm going to be asking you, well, I'm going to be hiding different words and you need to tell me what the, word were, what the words were, okay? 15 seconds and here you go. One, two, one, two, three. Let's see the chronometer. Excellent. Stop. Okay, beautiful and handsome. What are we going to be doing here? Tell me, what are the missing words? One and sad. Excellent. Now tell me, what are the missing words? Three happy, blue, and sad. Now tell me, what are the five missing words in here? Parezco la doña, ¿verdad? Ready? One, three, happy, set, and blue. Mm. Okay, easy, right? I'm going to be giving you just 10 seconds, well, 15 seconds, in order that you can remember this, okay? 10 seconds, 15, okay, one, two, one, two, three. With you. Stop. Okay. So now try to tell me what are the missing words that I have here. Hello, birthday run. Now tell me what are the missing words that I don't have here? Uh, 
Monday, July, and red. Now tell me what are the missing words that, ah, that I don't have here. <laughs> Oh, now tell me how many words can you remember from these boxes? At least five, at least, least five. Ready? Well, speak it is with N, sorry. Now, I'm going to give you five seconds. <laughs> no, not anymore. So now that we were playing this memory game, let me tell you why we are playing this. Well, this is an example of an activity that you can be having in order to remember or to remind vocabulary or in order to remind new vocabulary, okay? Let me tell you that during our classes, we are going to be having different and several tips and also different and several activities that are going to be super useful for you in order that you can be practicing English when we are not together or when we are not having classes, okay? When we are not having videos. Why I'm so interested on in this? Because in this level, uh, it is important that you can acquire more and more vocabulary. How can we play with this? Well, mm, I don't know, maybe you can say, well, uh, what I want to do is to learn English. Yes, I know, but sometimes it is a kind of difficult for us so, because we don't know what to do, what technique, what thing, what. That is going to be the situation. That's why we are having like these techniques that are going to be a kind of useful for you. So why we started with this? I do really recommend, I highly recommend that if we are going to be practicing verbs, because we are going to be working with a lot of verbs during this level in participle or simple past, but regulars and irregulars. Ooh, sometimes we used to say, how can we be learning the, 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 um, the verbs? Let me tell you this. You can do this. Start with the verbs that you already know in present. And here you are going to be writing the past of the verbs. Okay. For example, love, sing, study, write, and do. Well, but the past of study has to be here, studied. The past of do has to be did. The past of sing has to be sung. The past of write has to be growed. And the past of, I don't know, to study has to be studied, right? So what you can be doing is to be writing the past of the verbs and be hiding them. And you can be, oh, this was the, this was love, the past was loved. This was sing, the past is sung. Uh, this was uh, uh, hide everything. This was studied, this, but the past was studied. The, uh, this was right, the past is growth. No, for example, this is a technique that we, I can give you that is super easy. Okay, super easy because maybe you can tell me, uh, yes, but I used to uh, uh, learn five verbs every day. This, that's cool. And as I was telling you, there are a lot of techniques that we can be using. This is just an example because I'm trying to continue with my promise because you were asking me, how can I learn the verbs? And I told you, yes, I'm going to be recording a video where I can, I'm going to be giving you some good tips in order to do it. So here you have this and every day, and we are going to be having extra videos where I'm going to be giving you different, different, different tips related to this. Well, now that you started with the easiest verbs, continue with the same slide. Now, now that you know these five verbs in present and in past, now, Continue with other five verbs that you know in present and write the past, no? 
Then you can continue with more uh, other five and another five, another five, depending. It could be in a week and two weeks as you wish. Then try to change the dynamic. Now, if you already know the past uh, of the verbs, try to write the participle thing, sang, sung, do, did, done. Right, growed, greeted, swim, swam, swim. Uh, I don't know what other study, study, study. Okay, and you are going to be playing now with past and participles. Oh, this is going to be greeted, right, growed, greeted. This is going to be sung, sing, sung, and this is sung. Oh, this is going to be I don't know, studied, 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 studied. Mm. And you are starting with five and five, five and present past, past participle. Then you can continue with more. What you can do is to write here, present past participle, present past participle, present past participle. And in order to be looking the different tenses with the different uh, verbs that we are going to be having here, different verbs, or you can be having the same verb with different uh, tenses. You can be adapting this activity as you wish in order that you can be practicing the verbs, okay? And then the, the situation is going to be getting better and better and better because you are going to be having more um, ways to, or more options to be having different, different verbs. This can be with verbs, this can be with furniture, this can be with uh, adjectives. You can be using this as well with as, as many forms as you can imagine. If you need more ideas, please let me know. I'm going to be playing with you. And also you can be using this exercise with yourself, but you can be using this exercise with more people, okay? If, if you have kids, you can be using uh, this um, with, with them, okay? So, and also what you can do is to write the pronunciation. It's a kind of tired of difficult because I need to be writing Yes, but if you are a visual learner, it is going to be helping you a lot because you need to write the verbs and also you need to practice and you and you are doing all these exercises that are going to be pretty, pretty complete and are going to be helping you. You are going to be killing two birds of one shot. Los pájaros de un tiro me lo acaba de sacar de la manga. Ah, that is what we can be doing, okay? Es por eso que siempre te estoy diciendo, escribe, escribe una carta o algo porque la cuestión mente, mano, te ayuda mucho muchísimo en varias cuestiones entonces sígueme para más tips <laughs> well let's continue well now chan 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 let's ah ya no vimos a mi hermana eh, here it is chan 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 let's start with this that I have here we are uh, yes you already know what we were talking about yesterday what were we having yesterday I know that you know tell me tell me tell me tell me Exactly, we were talking about <laughs> We were talking about the past participle. Past participle. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. We were talking or we were having a general review about certain certain things. But now we are going to continue with this that I have here for you. Let me share with you my screen. Chan, 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 chan. And yesterday we were talking about the past continue uh, with the ing and the verb to be, right? And we were having different and several exercises with them. But now let's continue with the other topic that is going to be pretty interesting but that maybe you remember. We are going to be talking about the future tenses. Let me tell you that here in this level intermediate, we are going to be talking about the different kind of futures that we are going to be having. Because in this moment, we are going to be talking about future with will, future with go, going to, sorry. And we are going to be talking about the differences between these two tenses, okay? Also, we are going to be having other two um, futures that are going to be pretty useful, Pretty, pretty useful that maybe you don't know, or maybe you know them, but we have some situations with them. But we are going to be having that. First of all, we are going to continue with this that I have here for you, future tenses, super easy, super cool. 
Okay, this is going to be pretty fast. Don't worry, we have the time. Will, will, yes. Remember, remember when we are going to be making use of will. Remember that will is going to be a model verb that is going to be helping us to create a future. Okay, if we don't use the word will, we are not going to be having future. If we don't have the, or if we don't use the structure of going to, we are not going to be having future with these two kind of futures, okay? So will is going to be meaning anything, but it is going to be creating a meaning and that meaning is going to be future. So when we are going to be making use of will, First of all, with predictions, okay? With predictions. And here we have some examples. Dale, the contraction, Dale, leave the food in the fridge. Don't worry, you won't go hungry. Mm. Or don't go out in the rain. You'll get wet. We are making some predictions, okay? They will leave the food in the fridge. Mm. Don't worry, you won't go hungry. Ooh, it is a prediction that you are not going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't go out in the rain, you'll get wet. You are predicting something that is going to be happening. Also remember that we are going to be making use of will when we are giving or making or talking about promises. I'll always love you. Mm -hmm. I won't forget to phone you later. Maybe you are not having here the word I promise, but you can infer that you are having here a promise that the person that is talking is giving or making or doing a promise, depending the case, okay? <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sick, I'm sick. Well, also, if you are going to be having some requests or an invitations, we are going to be making use of the uh, of this um, modal verb. Will, for example, will you turn on the light, please? Will you come for a cup of coffee later? No le gustaría una tacita de café. Ay, no será mucho molestia. No, como que pase usted. There, here is where we are going to be making use of will. And also, if you are going to be, oh, if you are going, oh, if you are offering something, you are going to be making use of will. I'll pay for your sandwich. Oh, will I help you make dinner? Oh, <laughs> that's where you are going to be making use of will. Okay, now let me tell you this. Will future, will future, because we have the going to future and the present progressive future and the present simple future. Will future is going to be expressing a spontaneous decision, an assumption with regard to the future or an action in the future that cannot be influenced. <laughs> Angie, what, what is that? Ah, take it easy, take it easy. When we are going to be making use of will and how can we uh, uh, understanding what we are having here? Will is going to be, as I was telling you, for a spontaneous decision. Wait, I will help you. It's something that you are deciding in this moment. You were not thinking about that. No, it is something that you are deciding, right? Or for example, when you go to a restaurant, you say, what are you going to be eating? Well, uh, I will have the fish and the coffee, please. Oh, uh, you are making a spontaneous or you are taking or having a spontaneous decision. Mm. Also, when you are going to be giving an opinion, when you are going to be talking about hope, uncertainty, or assumption regarding to the future, acerca del futuro, you are going to be making use, of, uh, making use of will. For example, he will probably, probably, that word is going to be giving me the clue for using will. I think he probably, perhaps, I believe, I feel in my heart, something is telling me. 
expressions like that, you are going to be making use of will. Okay, he will probably come back tomorrow. Oh. Also, as we were saying, we are going to be having a promise. A promise? Yes. I will not watch TV tonight. It is not necessary for me to say, I promise. Well, but you are inferring that it is about a promise that someone is giving you or a promise that you are making, okay? Also an action in the future that cannot be influenced. I mean, that is going to be happening and happening and happening. For example, it will rain tomorrow. The sun will rise tomorrow. The, the moon will rise at night. Ooh, that is something that cannot be influenced and that is going to be happening and happening and happening first God, first God. And also we are going to start talking about conditional clauses or conditional sentences. And let me give you this as a spoiler. We are going to be having for the, uh, with the first conditional or the conditional clauses type one. If I arrive late, I will call you. If I study, I will pass the exam. Oh, that is going to be the first conditional when we are going to, or where we are going to be making use of will. Anyway, now I'm going to be giving you some signal words that are going to be pretty useful for you. Will, in a year, next year, tomorrow, next Saturday, whatever, that means future are going to be here. Bermuton. I think probably, perhaps, maybe, uh, I, I believe, I feel in my heart and so on. That is going to be the Bermuton. And if you use these words, it is important that you can be using will. You are not going to be using the thing probably perhaps with other kind of futures, okay? We are going to be having this with will, okay? What is the meaning of vermin two? <laughs> Palabras como de adivinar, no? De suposiciones, suposiciones, supuestos, presunciones. Okay, let's continue with this. In a pause, wait, no estoy promocionando nada, nada más me agarra la imagen. <laughs> Future with will. Remember, decisions, predictions, and promises. Okay. We are going to be mix, mixing present and future. Yes. Depending the context, if you need to do it, you can do it. You can do whatever you want, okay? There's no problem with this, but be careful about the grammar the syntax or the syntaxes <laughs> and also the meaning and the context, okay? If you take care of all those situations, you can be doing whatever you want with English, okay? Now, remember what we are going to be having. I will or I will not. And will not is going to be want or I'll, he'll, she'll, you'll, uh, uh, my friends, that could be possible, yes. It is like more common with the pronouns or with the object pronouns, I'll, he'll, she'll, will, jewel, they'll, or they will, we will. But if you have a name here and you can use, and if you want to use a contraction, well, that is not a big deal. There is not a big trouble or a big problem. You can do it, maybe depending with some names or some situations, it is going to be a kind of a tradition. But the language is changing, changing, changing every day. So you can do it. There's not a big deal. There is not a big tr trouble with, with that, okay? It is more common with uh, object pronouns, but if you have a name, you can do it also. One, that is a contraction that will not. Now, Imagine, Angie, that I want to say, I'll not watch TV. Can I do it? Yes, you can do it. There's not a big deal. There's not a big trouble. It is not super common, but 
talking about grammar that it could be uh, proper. Yes, indeed, you can use it, don't worry. And this is the structure of will, right? I will work tomorrow, I will not work, or I won't. Will I work always your, um, your principal verb at the beginning? Because remember that we are not going to be having two questions marks in there, okay? These are different um, uh, examples that we are going to be having related to will. Uh, with contractions and without contractions. I will play with you. This is like a promise. I won't play with you. Uh, you're so bad. Will I play with you? Can I be playing with you? Will I play with you? Play it? Yes, you can do it. Yes, and the answers, remember. Yes, you will or no, you will not or won't. But please never say, yes, I'll. Yes, you'll. Yes, chill. No, come on. This is going to be a short answer, but it doesn't need to be super short, okay? The shorter way that you can have is yes or no, and that's it. But if you dare to say, oh, will she play with us football? Yes, yes, chill. No, please, don't do that. Yes, she will. Or you can say only yes, or yes, she will. That is the short way to answer with will. Or yes, she will play with us, but tomorrow, because in this moment, and you can be giving a long answer, and that's going to be cool, and that's going to be great. Okay. So these are going to be the short answers also. That was will. Now let's continue with going to, going to, yes. Going to is going to be also for future, okay? And we are going to be making use of going to in order to refer to future events so that suggest a very strong association with the present. What is that? The time is not important, it is later than now, but the attitude is that the event depends on something in the present situation that we know about. <gasps> what is that? Going is mainly used to refer to our plans and intentions or to make predictions based on, based on present evidence. In everyday speech, going to is often shortened to gonna, especially in American English, but it is never written that way. Ah. What is all this text, Angie? It's a kind of difficult to understand. Well, it is important that you cover, uh, you can have a kind of grammar related to this, but sometimes it is boring but necessary. But let me tell you, or let me explain to you this in a shorter way, okay? Going to is going to be pretty similar to will, but at the same time, they are going to be having some differences that we are going to be learning in this moment. You can be using going to as gonna, but that is super informal, okay? You are going to be mentioning it in spoken English. I'm gonna do my homework. And that's cool, but it is informal. But we are going to be pretty careful with writing gonna, because when you are writing, it's supposed that you, be, you need to be more formal, okay? You can be writing gonna, it's okay. Everybody is going to understand what you are saying, but it is informal, okay? Especially in American English, you are going to be facing this gonna, 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 because in American English, they do really love to be uh, having some um, contractions in almost, if they are having 10 words, eight are going to be with contractions. <laughs> And I love American English, I, I love American, and I love British English, and I love British people. But the reality is that, that in American English, we are going to be having some shortened sounds. And in British English, it is going to be different. They are going to be having like more exact um, words and pronunciations, okay? Now, let me show you something about going to. Going to is going to be used for plans and intentions. Is Freddie going to buy a new car soon? It's a plan, a personal plan that Freddie has, okay? Or is an intention that Freddie has? Are Joe and Pam going to visit Milan when they are in Italy? 
Oh, is it? I'm asking about their plans. I'm asking about their intentions. It is necessary to know the answer. Now, I think Nigel and Mary are going to have a party next week. Oh, maybe you know about their intentions or maybe you know about their plans, okay? Now look at this. We are going to have dinner together tomorrow. Oh, you are mentioning going to because it is a plan, a personal plan that you have. And if you are expressing that plan is because you have been planning it before. Aren't you going to stay at the library until your report is finished? Ooh, that is a plan that that person has or is the intention. I'm asking about if he or she has that plan or that intention. Also, let me tell you that going to is going to be for, for predictions also. also, also. Going to is going to be for predictions. Will is going to be for predictions too. Yes, but this is going to be a kind of different prediction because with going to, you are going to be having, yes, a prediction, but without a scientific or um, hard evidence. And with going to, the evidences are going to be here with you. He's going to be a brilliant politician, maybe because he's very good at the school or I don't know why. No? Or I'm going to have a hard time falling asleep because I'm suffering about this sickness. Oh, I have been suffering of this situation during all this week. Oh, it is a prediction that you are making, but you have certain evidences that are going to be helping you to uh, make this prediction. You're going to be sorry you said that. Oh my goodness, maybe you mentioned a bad word or you were gossiping about someone and indeed you are going to be sorry about what you said. It is a prediction that you have some evidences and you know that it is going to be happening. Is it going to rain this afternoon? You are asking for something that maybe it is going to be happening. Are they going to come to the party? It's supposed that they are going to be coming with us. Are they going to be coming to the party? It's a prediction, but I know that maybe at the beginning it's a kind of difficult because you can say, oh my goodness, but it is almost the same. No, 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 no. Look at this. Remember that with going to, you are going to be making use of your verb to be always and depending the subject pronoun that you are, the object pronoun that you are going to be having. You cannot say I are, Sandy am, they is, no, never ever in their life, okay? The verb to be as it has to be. Always you're going to and your verb. A verb. I am going to study Chinese. You cannot say, I am going to study Chinese. What about the two? I going to study Chinese. What about the am? I am going, I am go study Chinese. No, that's not fair. That's not cool. Sandy going to, no. You need to be using the verb to be and going to. Always, always, ever, ever, okay? Now, here you have some examples about going to. I am going to cook. Am I going to cook? Because remember that, the, remember that the verb to be is going to be at the beginning because we are not going to be having two question marks. Only one question mark as we need to open the question, your verb, your principal verb. Remember the verb that the verb to be is always a principal verb. Is going to be at the beginning, okay? I am not going to cook or I'm not going. You're not going or you are not or you aren't going. You can be using the same constructions as, as always, okay? You can be having this contraction. You can be having this contraction. You can be having this contraction or you can be having this contraction as you wish. No problem. We are not going to be changing anything from the verb to be, okay? Here you have other examples. I am going to play soccer. You aren't going to play soccer. Where are we going to play soccer? You can be making use of questions worse. Good. What questions do you have about this? No questions. If you have some questions, please let me know. I'm going to be having to today. Now, this is the most important that we are going to be having will versus going to, okay? Now, 
will is going to be super used when we are talking about actions that are decided at the moment of speaking, immediate decisions. Okay, when you are speaking, you are deciding. Well, that's what you are going to be making use of. Will I will have salt and the fish? Ah, like in a restaurant. Oh, this is so hard. I will help you. Mm. You are deciding something at the moment that you are speaking. That was a quick, a fast, an immediate decision. So if you are going to be having an immediate decision, you are going to be making use of will. In the other hand, going to is going to be different because going to also is going to be for plans, personal plans, personal intentions, but those plans have been decided before the moment of I am mentioning them, okay? Prior plans. I mean, I am going to visit my aunt next Friday. This is not something that I just uh, that I am deciding at this moment. It is something that I have been thinking about, and now I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be doing it. It's a plan. It's a plan that I have, but it's a plan that I have been planning before to mention it. Okay. Also, we are going to be will for predictions, but these predictions are going to be based on personal opinions or experiences, okay? Predictions without evidence. For example, I think the America will get, win the game. Le vas a la America, no, a la vuelta, look. Pero no me meto, no, no tengo problema, no me gusta el fútbol. I think the Necaxa will win the game. It's a prediction that I'm giving because I believe in my heart. I think it's supposed that, but I don't have a real, real evidence about that. It's just what I'm saying is just what I'm thinking about. No. In the other hand, going to is going to be used in order to express a prediction, but that prediction is going to be based on a present evidence and evidence that you have present evidence or evidence that you have predictions with evidences and will predictions without evidences. Okay, look at those black clouds. It is going to rain. You have that evidence. Maybe you are not touching that evidence, but you can see the clouds. It is an evidence of what you are predicting. Also, as I was telling you, will is going to be used in order to express a future fact. A future fact, what is that? For example, the sun will rise tomorrow. It is something that is going to be happening. It's a fact that that will happen. Going to, in the other hand, is going to be used when something is going to be happening immediately or about to happen. For example, get back, the bomb is going to explode. It is something that indeed is going to be happening and it is near to happen. What do you think? Or you can, another thing, you can be using will and going to both futures in order to make or in order to talk about future predictions without having a real difference in meaning. Will and going to are going to be having almost the same meaning when you are making some predictions. But remember that if you have more evidence, you are going to be making use of going to. I think, it, I think it will be foggy tomorrow. Oh, I think it is going to be foggy tomorrow. Okay, if you're going to be giving an, a general prediction, you can be using both. But if you're going to be making a real, real, real prediction where you have evidences, you are going to be making use of going to. Okay, this is the review of the going to, the same that I was explaining you, I believe, okay? Um, here you are going to be having an extra help for you in order to know the difference between the will and the going to. Okay. Mm, very good. As you have here, no? Decisiones tomadas en el momento en el que hablamos, lo dijimos. O cuando expresamos las condiciones, este te voy a enseñar. No te preocupes. Y el going to planes que se hicieron con anterioridad y que se van a ejecutar pronto, no? O las intenciones que tienes de realizar una actividad a largo plazo. Uh -huh. 
Well, what questions do you have related to this? Because I'm going to continue with this tense. Remember that if you have any question or any situation, you can be asking me and I'm going to be helping you. Now, let's finish with present perfect because with present perfect, we are going to be having different, different, different words. Maybe present perfect, it's, is it a situation are going to be, the situations are going to be the words that I'm going to be giving you. Present perfect. We were talking about the present perfect during the last, um, well, even it was about the last week where you were having your graduation. And we were saying that we are going to be making use of present perfect in order to talk about situations that started in the past and that can be continuing till this moment or that just stop, okay? Or for past events with a present consequence or for life experiences. And here we are going to be making use of the participle, past participle, okay, as verbs. That's why I was telling you practice the verbs, practice the verbs, practice the verbs. And here we have some examples. I have lived in Querétaro for three years. He vivido en Querétaro por tres años, pero no te estoy diciendo si ya no estoy viviendo ahí, si sigo viviendo. Tú infieres, es que yo he vivido en Querétaro por tres años y creo que ahí sigues, ¿no? She has, acuérdate que va a ser el have y el has, que have y has significan exactamente lo mismo, a ver, pero el has se va con she, he, it, las terceras personas. She hasn't had, verbo no está en pasada, está en participio, she hasn't had a vacation for two years. Ella no ha tenido vacaciones por dos años y hasta la fecha, ¿no? Desde el pasado hasta la fecha. How long have you worked here? ¿Cuánto tiempo has trabajado tú aquí? O sea, y sigues trabajando, ¿no? Maybe also for past events where we are going to be having this with a consequence. I have lost my wallet. He perdido mi billetera. ¿Dónde estará? I cannot find it. Or have you eaten yet? ¿Ya comiste? ¿Ya has comido? No. I mean, are, are you hungry? Or, I have just finished the report. It is ready. Apenas acaba de terminar, he terminado el reporte. Oh, something that just happened. Algo que acaba de pasar. No, o sea, no está en el presente, no está en el pasado. Ahorita acaba de pasar y ya pasó. And also, we are going to be having this for life experiences or life experiences. I have never tried octopus. Nunca he probado los pulpos. He has, or the contraction, he's been to Cancun three times. Ha estado en Cancun tres veces. Cuidado aquí, no te vayas a confundir con la contracción de he is. Porque no quedaría he's been, él está estado. Mm -mm. He has been, él ha estado. A simple vista tú dices, es el verbo to be, no, 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 es la contracción del has, he is y he has se van a, a, van a tener la misma forma cortita, pero el contexto y el verbo que utilices le va a dar el significado. Have you ever broken a bone? ¿Alguna vez te has roto un hueso? And we are going to be having all these words that we are going to be making use of. Okay, we are going to be using them. Here you have some examples. Yo he cocinado pasta. I have cooked pasta. No está en presente simple. Eh, en presente simple. No está en pasado simple. Este es un verbo regular, pero está en participio. Yo he cocinado pasta. My friends have come. O my friend has come. Okay, and this is how we are going to be making use of um, our past perfect, or present perfect, sorry. They have been to Italy twice. She has driven her new car. They haven't, she hasn't driving her new car. Have they, has she, yes. They have, yes, 
She has. No, he hasn't. Yes, no, they haven't. If I ask with this, I need to answer with this. I can be using names instead of pronouns. Yes. That is going to be um, the past, uh, the present perfect, okay? You have seen, you haven't seen, have you seen? Okay. Excellent. I have tried sushi before. I have not tried sushi before. Have you tried sushi before? Present perfect, okay? Now, the situation that I have for you uh, is this still, yet, and already, since, and for, just. Those are going to be the words I, that we are going to be having and that we are going to be looking for. What do you think? Now, now that we finish finally the review, we are going to start with some other specific situations of the language. What questions do you have? What situations? Any questions? Any situations? Feel confidence to ask me whatever you want, okay? Sometimes it's a kind of difficult for me to answer at the very, very time, but promise that we are going to be having the, the opportunity to, to do it. Okay, my beautiful students, sometimes you can see that I'm uh, moving my, my head to other sides because I'm trying to look to my, at my watch in order to know this, uh, the, the time, because sometimes it's like, 40 minutes, sometimes one hour and 20 minutes, and it's like, oh my goodness, so I need to be pretty, um, I need to be pretty careful about uh, this. I would like to have classes of two hours with you. Yes, indeed, but let me know. Uh, you have the, the audio where I'm telling you that maybe we could be having more uh, classes online, online classes. But uh, we are going to be talking about during all these days. What do you think? Well, my beautiful students, it has been a pleasure. As I told you, this was the first week where we were having some situations with the videos. I have to uh, never to do that again. Promise I'm drinking my medicine. <laughs> But this Monday, you are going to be having the rest of the classes. And any situation, please, at any time, let me know. I'm going to be helping you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Enjoy it and see you soon. See you later.